Yes! At last, I am back with more Gantz. I love this series. I'm so excited to get back into reading it. Omnibus 4 just came out and I got this pre-ordered, showed up on Christmas Eve, early Christmas present for me. It took me a couple, uh, about a week before I could actually read it, but I read it and I'm here to give you guys my review or at least my thoughts about Gantz Omnibus Volume 4. So this is completely new territory for me. This goes beyond anything I knew about Gantz and wow, this gets really good, you guys. This, I was actually not even expecting it to get as good as it did. I think for the most part, what really uh, excited me about this volume or this omnibus, this is three volumes in one. This would be what, 12, 13, 14, and 15? Or, nine, no, 10, 11, 12. Sorry. Anyways, so this of course picks up where the last one left off, where uh, there was an alien that came back for revenge against K after the game of Gantz had concluded, came into his school basically disguised as a person and started wreaking havoc, and K of course was without his suit and trying to figure out what to do. Uh, luckily the cops come and they basically try to like blow it apart. Doesn't really do the job, but K still has the gun and is able to defeat it. Um, leads to a couple of interesting things. One is uh, K being on his own, dealing with this all by himself, because we have lost Kato and we have lost Kishimoto, two very big, very important characters, uh, who of course died in one of the last Gantz games. And then one, the one after that, K is thrown into it completely by himself, which I thought was a very tragic thing to happen, because Gantz itself as an entity, whatever it is, the, the sphere, there is a person inside the sphere or something like that, whatever's controlling it, really has its own sadistic way that it's playing, especially with K. It doesn't really seem to be consistent with its own set of rules. Basically what I'm saying is like, it'll go out of its way to specifically uh, call out a member that it pulls in a member of the Gantz team, or in this case K Corono, and basically try to make his life living hell. And it might be doing this because as long, the longer a person exists within the game of Gantz, perhaps Gantz itself tries to make it more difficult on that person. For example, you know, Corono now has been in, what, four? Starting his fifth Gantz experience in this omnibus. So it could be calling him out specifically because it wants him to experience a higher and higher difficulty level every time it continues. Um, but again, we kind of go into the mystery about all of it. We're trying to learn about what Gantz is and why it does what it does as we go through this story. So we're learning as the characters are learning and there are plenty of things that we don't know, but it keeps me engaged, keeps me curious, and uh, I'm not saying, I don't need it to be spelled out for me. You know, I don't need to be spoon fed. I just, these little teases, these little gim glimpses of just seeing how Gantz acts helps me put together like what Gantz is all about. And this is what I'm coming up with so far, that it literally tries to raise the difficulty level of its surviving players each time as they try to get to 100 points. And what happens when you get to 100 points? The manga hasn't exactly covered this yet, but we get an idea of what happened with a character named Izumi. Uh, I have a lot to say about him, and actually I'm going to hold off on that thought for just a moment as I talk about some of the other characters, because I, there's a lot to say about Izumi. A lot of this is focused on Izumi, so that'll take up the bulk of the review, I'm sure. So let me just talk about a couple of other characters real quick first. We're introduced to some new people. One uh, is a character named Hiroto Sakurai. I wrote that down over there. That's why I looked over there, in case you're wondering. Um, I know you were concerned. It's okay. It's just my notes. Um, <laughs> so Sakurai is a very interesting case and a direction that I just didn't expect the story to go in. So here you have this kid that's been bullied and not just bullied but molested by a gym teacher and other kids that are basically dragging him into the bathroom and like forcing him to do sexual things. Uh, so this kid is getting bullied and harassed and treated like absolute dog shit so he wants to kill himself. And the thing that Gantz deals with these themes of what happens in adolescence and where your mind is and what these things can do to you, you know, it has dealt with bullying in the past, but this one with this character um, really ramps it up. And of course, later in the volume, we deal with a mass shooting, but I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, but with this character, what's his name again? Sorry, Sakurai. Sometimes it takes me a while to learn characters' names, uh, especially Japanese. Um, he's going to try to kill himself. But he puts out a message online on the internet saying that he's going to do it. And this one guy responds saying that, uh, you know, he doesn't need to. And actually, um, I'm going to teach you a better way. Something you can go about getting revenge on these people 
that have been harassing and, you know, beating you up and molesting you and all this stuff. So this guy comes over. He's kind of like a hippie looking dude. Uh, but he basically, and this is something brand new thrown into the world of Gantz. Basically, we are like 12 volumes in and all of a sudden it's introducing this new concept and this could go terribly wrong. Introducing something like this, this late in the game, could kind of make your series, you know, really fall apart. But it's done in a very... Uh, concise, perfected way that I think where it's gonna go is somewhere very special. Basically it's telekinesis. Basically it's controlling things with your mind. This guy comes over and basically shows him that he can move things and he can change things with his mind if he focuses himself, focuses his energy, his chi, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, and he's able to move things with his mind. He moves the liquid in the coffee cup and he also speeds up the character's heart basically speeds up his heart rate, saying that I could keep increasing your heart rate until you die. I could give you a heart attack, is basically what he's saying. And he's saying, like, these bullies that are bullying you, um, if you train to use your mental ability like this, if you learn what I have learned, you can stop them from doing this. So essentially, you can kill them. Kill them instead of killing yourself. Which, of course, goes into a whole other area of morality of, like, is it right to kill, you know, to do this for the vengeance of people that have done wrong to you? How far is too far? Is it okay to kill them? And that's something that this character deals with, because he does manage to learn this, and uh, he does get taken into the bathroom once again to be whatever they do to him. And, actually, this part was really, really triggering for me, um, because it, it shows just like a close-up, Oh, God, I actually opened up right to the same page of uh, the guy's brain. He, like, focuses on his brain and basically makes uh, makes him have, like, an aneurysm, uh, which is very triggering for me for very personal reasons that I'm not going to get into in this video, but it was kind of hard to read. It was kind of hard to even look at the image of the picture. It was a triggering thing for me. Um, but I, you know, took a step back and I managed to get through. I, I understood what the story was trying to say, so... Uh, you know, that aside, I was able to continue reading and, you know, Gans has shown a lot of fucked up shit, but, you know, everybody has their own things that kind of make them, like, queasy and whatnot, and, and that's just one of mine. He feels this lingering regret and realization that he has become a murderer. Like, there's two kinds of people in the world, right? There's people that haven't killed anybody and people that have, and it's a different world and it's a different experience, and he's... He's in that now. And the guy that trained him to do it thinks that he shouldn't feel bad about it. You know, they were being horrible, you know, asshole people to him. And that's kind of where the conundrum comes from because did they deserve it? Well, you know, they deserve some kind of punishment. Sure, did they deserve to die? I don't know because how many people are they doing this to? Maybe he saved, you know, dozens of people that were being beaten up and sexually harassed because he did this. You know, we don't really know, and that's kind of like on the reader to decide, uh, which I like how they did it that way. And I like how it's not insanely overpowered, this telekinesis thing. It's really just like, um, you know, you're focusing on one part of a person's body and you're able to, to manipulate it in one way. But you have to focus and you have to train, and, and so there is that kind of aspect to it. So can any human being in the world do this? With the way that it's uh, set up in the book, I kind of see that they could. It kind of feels like they can, like anybody could basically control energy enough in order to manipulate what happens in another person or move things from one place to another, telekinesis, whatever it is. Um, so they're both there. Anyways, another new character that we get is a uh, big muscle-bound guy named Dizemon. Dizemon? Is that how you say it? I really don't know. It sounds like a Digimon name. Uh, but this guy, what the potential for this character is, is what I'm excited to see. Because we have yet to see in Gantz, everyone that gets pulled into the Gantz game is basically an average person. Yeah, we've had like Yakuza members and stuff like that, but this guy has training and dedication and he is a powerful fighter and warrior in in his own way you know he's just he's kind of a punk basically he's going around challenging all the strongest guys that he can find to face them in a fight to show that he's the strongest but introducing a character like this in Gantz I think is a fantastic idea because we know that in the Gantz game if you put the suit on you're enhanced you're stronger you're faster but what happens when a guy who's already well-trained, already super strong, already super fast, you know, not in a supernatural way and like a regular human being, but like a martial artist that's just on point. Now, we did see a martial artist in one of the last Gantz games um, who was killed by the statue. He was a very silent character. He didn't really have much to them, 
to him. And this guy seems to be a lot more dedicated, a lot more uh, um, sophisticated in his way of fighting, also in his presentation. Um, and he's going around to try to find the strongest guy. And he goes, and uh, someone mentions, he goes to one of the uh, the guys that was bullying K, Corona, our main character, way back when, and uh, challenges them, and he's like, no, there's someone way stronger, it's Corona, which was awesome. I love this moment, because K, he's just an average, like, normal 15-year-old kid, 16, I don't, I don't know how old he is, but, you know, he's not trained in battle. Basically, he's gone through Gantz, and because of the suit and because of the experiences in Gantz, he's become a more competent, uh, I guess, fighter, warrior, whatever you want to call it, uh, but he's not like a fist fighter. He's not, he hasn't been through training, you know? He's never, like, learned how to throw a punch. He doesn't even know a fighting stance. He, like, makes one up as he's about to fight this dude, and the dude is way faster than Kay is. He's, like, kicking the shit out of him, but Kay is wearing the suit, thankfully, so none of the dude's punches hurt him, and then Kay is able to push him back, you know, jump with him, knock him into the side of a building, and win the fight. And uh, Dezaman, or whatever his name is, he's just like, what the fuck was that? This skinny little 15-year-old kid just threw me with such force that I could not fight back. He's, he's just, like, distraught. He's like, what? I don't even understand what just happened. As no one would. And the final, uh, he's not a new character, but he's definitely way expanded upon, and that is uh, Izumi. So, Izumi is this kid that apparently has been through Gantz before. And I was saying, like, we don't really know what happens in Gantz once you reach 100 points. Well, the idea is here that is alluded to is that if you reach 100 points, you get to leave the game of Gantz. Um, which was, you know, thrown in before. We knew that when Nishi mentioned it and yada, yada, yada. But we kind of get a confirmation that you leave the game of Gantz and your memory of Gantz is wiped, basically. So you don't really remember being there, but you ha have these kind of like lingering thoughts and feelings of the experiences that you had. So this is why Azumi was so focused on the Gantz website that, again, Nishi made to talk about his experiences. And he was so adamant about getting K Corono to admit the fact that he is in Gantz, and he is the, the dude mentioned on the website. And he does it to the point where he holds him at gunpoint and basically shoots him with the suit on to see that, you know, K took no damage. And he basically says that uh, he got a message from Gantz. So Izumi is saying that he got this little sphere from Gantz that, told, that Gantz told him to bring more people, more competent people, into the game. Uh... And this, to me, means that Gantz is looking at Kay Corono and trying to make things specifically more difficult for him, like I was saying. Because he was the only person in the last Gantz game. Like, he, Gantz didn't bring anybody else in. It was just Kay. So, what is this specific fascination with Kay that Gantz has? Is there one? Or is he just fucking with him? Is he just fucking with him to fuck with him? Or is there a reason behind it? Is there does he see something in K that he that Gantz is literally trying to make it more difficult for him simply because he's surviving, like I was saying before? Or is there something more specific about him? I don't really know. But if Gantz can send out a message to people that have been in the game before and got out, um, that leads into a whole other group of questions and ideas like so how many people are out there that have been in Gantz before and uh, can they all come back does Gantz send a message out to any of them or did it just see how uh, intensely Izumi wanted to come back to the game and sense that and send it out specifically to him maybe he's the only one that really wants to be there that bad um, to come back so he uh, decides that he is going to go on a shooting spree and kill as many people as he can, and try to get killed in the process, and then return to the Gantz game. And this was pretty hard to 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 read as well, because, I mean, mass shootings, even though this was written, like, over ten years ago at this point, um, you know, they've only gotten more prevalent in time as we go along, and and it's, um, it's something really scary that could happen anytime, anywhere, and it's very real, it's very realistic, and with all the crazy things that happen in Gantz, you know, I feel like, for the most part, it does have a lot of realism to it, as far as the violence is concerned, as far as the way people die, and as far as, uh, you know, the brutal reality to it all, the fact that, you know, you, you just 
can be walking down the street and this could happen or, you know, something like that. And the fact that Izumi, also during it, decides to uh, basically do blackface and make himself look like a black man in order to do it. Now, this could be interpreted in a couple different ways. One is that Izumi is very tall and very good at sports, and a lot of people in his school already kind of, like, associate him with, um, you know, someone who is black, you know, because of, like, the stereotype of being really tall and good at basketball and all of that stuff. So it's kind of mentioned, and it's kind of like... They do it in a way that's, like, not mocking him. They're not making fun of him. But they're just saying that, like, oh, you should have been black because you're good at all of this stuff. Uh, also, I mean, it is a way to hide his face so that people don't recognize him. Um, and this will definitely play a part when it gets to the final Gantz game that's or that's uh, at the end of the, the omnibus. So uh, it's a little awkward. It's a little strange. But I kind of get the intent behind it. I kind of get that, you know, he's he's putting on a mask, he's framing himself as a different person, he's embracing what other people already see him as, he's not, he's not doing it in a way that's, it, it's gonna, that's gonna sound wrong when I say it, I'm like, he's not doing it in a way that's racist, even though it's an inherently racist thing, but it's, he's doing it because he's like putting on a persona of what people view him as a thing that he's not. Does that make sense? I don't know, somebody tell me down below. Anyways, so he goes on the shooting spree, and then we also have uh, Kay's girlfriend, um, Tai is her name, Tay, I believe. And this is another one of the biggest aspects of this uh, omnibus, is that Tay is a girl that Corono asked out from a dare, because kids are stupid, and, you know, he wanted to do it as a joke, but she actually took, like, a really strong liking to him, and the kids that dared him to do it were killed in, when the alien showed up at Kay's school. So... Uh, he doesn't have anything to prove to anybody, and he's actually enjoying his time around her. She enjoys spending time with him. They do things together. She lets him have as much sex with her as he wants, and we know Kay is, Corona is just a horny fucking teenager, so he loves that. But he also gets to the point where he really starts to find affection for her, and he's actually kind of like transitioning uh, inwardly because he is finding a reason to stick around, a reason to live, because he was basically uh, just a... He wasn't like, depressed to the point where he was going to kill himself like uh, like the other character, previous character I mentioned. Kay was more like just indulging in whatever kind of vices that you could because he didn't really care about himself or improving himself. So he's just watching a bunch of porn and he's, uh, you know, mocking and criticizing everybody that he sees. Basically, like, he doesn't really have his own kind of, like, soul, if that makes sense. He was basically just projecting. He just wanted to get laid with Kishimoto and all that stuff. Like, he, uh, you know, that's all he wanted out of her. With Tai, uh, he is really unexpectedly falling for her, which I think is a great thing to have for his character because Tai is, of course, not the kind of girl he would normally go to. You know, she is very plain-looking, very flat-chested, all this stuff that kind of goes against all the stuff he was interested in Kishimoto about. But at the same time, her affection for him just won him over, and now he wants to keep her safe, he wants to keep her protected, and it gives him more motivation to live through the Gantz games, which... Uh, she wound up at the same place where the shooting spree took place, and, you know, uh, Kay rushed there to, to save her. And during that shooting spree, we also get the death of, uh, of um, Dezamon and Sakurai, and Sakurai's uh, master, whatever. I can't remember his name. The guy that taught Sakurai how to use the telekinesis and whatnot. But they all die in the shooting spree, um, and they all have an attempt to, to stop it, but are unsuccessful. And then we have Tai, who, uh, or Tay, I don't know how you pronounce your name. But she gets knocked out, and so uh, Izumi has Kurono show up without his suit, and basically wants to have a standoff, see who can kill who. And uh, they actually manage to kill each other, and they both wind up in the Gantz room. Uh, so this is very curious, also, because Kei Kurono has died outside of Gantz, and yet he returns to Gantz. So this would really be his technically his second death. You know, one with the train and now being shot. So is Gantz just going to continuously pull K into the room until he's killed during a Gantz game? You know, can it do that? Can it just keep pulling you? So if you if you died 
and go to Gantz and survive and come back out and then you die again, can Gantz just decide to keep pulling you in until you die in the Gantz game and then just, you know, then you're finally killed off? I don't know. But of course, everyone winds up here and there's a bunch of new characters, but most of them are not expanded upon. These new characters were mostly kind of killed off very quickly, um, with the exception of a few. But we get the uh, the muscle bound, the strong uh, Daisamon, he is here, and then uh, the kid that can use telekinesis and his master, they are here in this Gantz game, and so is Izumi. He's back to Gantz, and now being back in the room, he's starting to remember all the things that happened from before. So, uh, you know, he's he's getting his, his mind back and whatnot, and Kay shows up, again now, without his suit. This is the second time he'll show up in Gantz without his suit, uh, because he dropped it in the real world, or, you know, before his death. So he's kind of screwed. Um, he also kind of just lays in like a, uh, you know, uh, basically a fetal position, just like depressed, like I can't believe this shit. Like I went there and I couldn't stop the shooting, you know, because he's not a heroic character. Like, like K. Corona is not a hero. He does heroic things on occasion, but he's not like in the name of truth and justice. He's just an average kid. But he realized that he cared about Ty so much that he wanted to go protect her. He got there late. Everyone's dead. There's been a massive shooting spree. He maybe could have done something because he has this enhancing suit, but he didn't get a chance to get there in time. And now he's stuck in the Gantz game with the guy that did the mass shooting, but who's not wearing his mask anymore. So nobody recognizes that this is the shooter except for Kay. And it's just great, man. This is just great shit. Like, I just, I'm so excited and ecstatic where Gantz is going. I, this was a great direction because you could get very stale just going from Gantz game to Gantz game to Gantz game. I mean, you could have really cool aliens. You could have cool fights and battles and gore and stuff. But the story going the way that it is now, introducing these characters, introducing this kid that could do telekinesis, that got bullied and whatnot, and introducing this new, like, kind of so strong, silent martial artist guy, and introducing Izumi, who's just this fucking asshole that kind of started off like a cool guy, and everyone views him as a cool guy, but now he's done these horrible things. And now Kei, who lost his former team, lost Kishimoto, lost Kato, is now finally finding some kind of purpose with his girlfriend, uh, and now he's torn away from her, back in the game of Gantz, and now without weapons or, or any, or without his suit, he's got weapons, but damn, this shit's great. This, um, I'm getting so fucking stoked for more Gantz. Anyways, they're fighting dinosaurs now. <laughs> the aliens are dinosaurs, which is awesome. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Um, and and that's kind of where, where it ends. I don't want this review to be too much longer, but there's there's a couple more characters introduced. Um, one is this old guy. There's two characters that stick with K. The rest kind of try to do their own thing, and their heads explode because they go out of bounds, and then others are getting killed by dinosaurs. And Izumi's there. He's got a, a Gantz sword, which we haven't seen before, and he's, uh, he's slicing them up and everything. Uh, and we also have K, who's with this old guy, who's just like, I'm Superman with this with his suit, you know, he, he, oh my god, it's crazy, it's awesome, um, and there's also this actress, uh, named Reika, or Reika, uh, correct me on the pronunciation, but she's actually a famous actress, or model, or something like that, that got pulled into the game of Gantz as well, so her and the old guy are kind of, like, hanging around Kay, because they kind of feel like he knows what's going on, um, I mean, this time, Kay didn't even attempt to try to explain anything to anybody. He was just laying on the floor in, like, absolute defeat. So, he, nobody knows what's going on with the game of Gantz. Nobody's wearing their suit except for Izumi um, and the old man and the actress. Uh, and, and besides that, yeah, everyone else is pretty much going to die. But we got the kid that can use telekinesis and the guy that taught him. And they're doing work. They're using it on the uh, dinosaurs. They're taking them out. Um, we also have, like, the martial artist guy, Dezamon. He's taking him out with his bare fist. Doesn't even have a suit. He's just grappling these fucking monsters and, like, pummeling them and stuff, which is awesome. So great to see. Something very breath of fresh air that we needed in Gantz. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see where it goes from there. So, basically, it kind of cliffhangs uh, in that game of Gantz, which would be the fifth Gantz that we've seen so far in the manga, and it's shaped it up to be one of the best, especially considering the fact that we have, you know, uh, Kurono again without a suit, we've got uh, Izumi who is, you know, getting, you know, more and more memory back of the last time he was in Gantz, so he's going to be a prominent fighter, 
Um, the Dezamon, if he actually manages to put on a suit, then holy shit, like, watch out, because this guy is just gonna tear shit up. And the extent of the telekinesis abilities from these guys, uh, from the, the kid and his master, wh wherever that could go, and how useful that could be in the game of Gantz. Um, and I'm so excited to see where it goes. Now, I will probably, once again, wait until the next Omnibus comes out, uh, because it's really, really fun to get something, get a Gantz this thick and just read three volumes at once. Uh, it, I, I really do enjoy reading it that way. Well, the only thing that sucks is the weight. I don't think the next one comes out till April, so that is a bummer. But uh, I do have other manga to read and other manga to review, so hopefully I will be able to bide my time and get into Gantz because... I cannot wait. I cannot wait to keep reading this. So, uh, what do you guys think? Let me know down below what you think about these three volumes of Gans. This would be uh, 10, 11, and 12, uh, or Omnibus Volume 4. Um, you can put uh, things down below, things to look forward to. Try to stay away from spoilers, if you will, because I am excited to read this, so I don't want to ruin anything too big. But if you want to tease me a little bit, you can. I definitely uh, will accept that. So, thanks a lot for watching this review, guys. I really do appreciate it. Uh, subscribe if you want to. Hit the bell notification so you can see when a video goes up. Uh, stick around for more manga, anime content. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll talk to you guys next time.